Hello, friends. This is your friend Kent C. Dodds, and I'm joined by my friend Angie Jones. Say hi, Angie. Hello. Super happy to have you here with us, Angie. Um, Angie and I, actually, you know what? I don't remember how we got introduced to each other. It was definitely over a year ago, though. Um, was it? It was through Apple Tools, I'm guessing, right? I think it was just through Twitter verse <laughs> just kind of running in the same circles or whatever yeah yeah exactly I, I make most of my friends these days on twitter now yeah. <laughs> but uh angie uh works at a company called apple tools i'm like super psyched about what apple tools is doing and i'm sure we'll talk about apple tools a little bit more uh today but i would like uh to like for everybody to get to know you, Angie, as, um, as I do. And so could you introduce yourself a little bit? Tell us uh, things about yourself, whether it's like your technical uh, things that you're interested in or personal or whatever you'd like to share. Yeah, sure. So I'm a senior developer advocate. Again, I work at Apple Tools, which is a startup that focuses on automated visual testing. So that's my niche. Um, testing is my niche, um, specifically automated testing. So I've been doing this for the bulk of my career, had a couple of stints in like feature development, but I really, really love um, automated testing and feel that, you know, I just get this bigger overall picture of the product and what we're doing and our customers, um, as well as get to flex my development muscles um, more because I get to architect you know, frameworks and solutions and stuff. So I've um, been in the industry for quite a while now, worked at, you know, some really big companies such as IBM and Twitter. Um, so I'm enjoying the startup life now, it's something different for me. Um, developer advocacy is also something different for me. So, you know, a couple of years ago, I started just uh, preaching the gospel, which is testing, and uh, did that at conferences all over the world and workshops and blog posts. So developer advocacy was a natural next step for me. Loving it so far. Awesome. Um, so when when you say like preaching the testing gospel, that makes me think of something that um, somebody once said, it was Ryan Florence, he said, sometimes it feels like testing is a religion. And if so, <laughs> then I belong to the church of Kent C. Dons. <laughs> uh, which is, yeah, that's kind of funny. Um, but it, it really, like, there, there's a lot um, about testing, in, like, um, a lot of opinions about that. I, w I went to the AssertJS conference last year, and it was great, all about testing JavaScript. Um, and what was interesting about it was how every talk seemed uh, to contradict the one before it. Oh, um, so, so many opinions <laughs> there. Um, but, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot. Um, like, I, I don't hear people talking quite as much about visual testing. And there's some really compelling arguments for, uh, you know, investing time in getting the confidence out of visual testing. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Angie, could you tell us a little bit about like what even is visual testing? And I'm curious why you got so into uh, visual testing. Yeah. Okay. So visual testing is essentially like snapshot testing with images. So when your application is in the state that you want it to be in and you verify this as a human being, you can utilize tools to take a picture of your application in that state. So this is mostly page by page basis. So let's say you're on a certain page, you've done some scenario and you want to capture this. You can capture this with an image. And then as part of regression tests, um, every time you run this test, then it'll take another picture and compare the two. So it's not something that's really new. It's actually been a while for, been around for a while now. However, the technique that was used in the past was pretty flaky. So it would do like a pixel to pixel comparison of these two images and determine if there's any difference between them. Well, you know, like I know on different resolutions, things can change. There's also things that are happening in our application that can change from one screenshot to the next, such as cursors blinking or things like that, you know? Mm. Um, so, Apple Tools has used a uh, new technology. They're using uh, AI and machine learning 
to be able to only detect the things that we care about as human beings, right? So I've been doing automation for a very long time, and I've been doing it um, the traditional way. You know, I, I use tools like Selenium WebDriver and uh, JUnit for assertions and things. And, uh, you know, I thought I was pretty good at it, <laughs> you know, got to principal mm -hmm. level at, as an automation engineer and then I was introduced to uh, visual testing. So I'm always looking at like new tools and, uh, you know, because I speak a lot and I write a lot. So I'm always looking for like what's hot on the market and what can help solve some of the challenges that lots of automation engineers and developers face. So I looked at visual testing with Apple tools and I realized Kent, how much... <laughs> I was not covering in my test. <laughs> um, and, you know, I thought I was pretty hot stuff. But when I looked at all that it looks at, you know, basically, you know, the saying like a picture is worth a thousand words. This is literally like a picture is worth a thousand assertions. Say, for mm. example, like uh, let's take a scenario where we, we added something to the shopping cart and maybe change the quantity to three, right? So if I was writing a test for this, I would make sure that, you know, probably the subtotal and the final total is okay. That would be my two assertions there. Mm -hmm. um, but then when you look at visual testing and how it's looking at the entire page, what if there were any like exceptions or errors that were thrown on that page? I don't have anything mm -hmm. in my code that's looking for that. What if the thumbnail on the image is not there? What if uh, by me increasing the quantity that distorted uh, the way that it was displayed and now it's kind of all jumbled and overlapping? None of that would be caught by my scripts because my script is simply looking at the DOM. With visual testing, I get basically anything I could think of plus more that's being validated. And it's usually like one or two lines of code. Yeah, yeah. And there's something that I like to say a lot, which is the more your tests resemble the way your software is used, the more confidence they can give you. Mm. And, um, and and that fits in perfectly with visual testing because um, with tip, like traditional unit and integration tests, where you have specific assertions, like you're saying, you, you um, like you can structure your thing so you okay, user click on this and then do that, um, but maybe the user can't click on that thing because it's hidden behind uh, yeah. another DOM node, or or maybe there's um, you know some color contrast issues because some CSS is applying you didn't expect it to, all, all of those things that you just said, um, and so you can get a huge amount of confidence with visual testing, uh, so. My next question is, and, and this is often when we're talking about these different types of testing, um, there always are trade-offs or are there? Uh, that's, I guess my question is, um, it, it seems like visual testing gets you a, a huge amount of confidence. And so why, uh, why shouldn't I just do visual testing for all of my tests? Like, is there a reason to uh, try, you know, um, or, or to mix in visual testing with my current testing strategy, mm -hmm. or should I just replace my current strategy with visual testing? Yeah, what I love about the Ableton's API is that it integrates with whatever you have. So if you're using Cypress or Selenium or Jest or whatever you're using, then there's uh, all of these various SDKs that will just integrate with what you have. So I do some workshops and I talk about like, the pros and cons of these different strategies. Do I replace everything or do I mix it in? And I show how you can couple it with traditional assertions as well in some cases. For example, um, it that, that visual check that's going to check the entire page, that's great in a lot of cases. But there may be some cases where I just don't want the entire page validated, right? Maybe it's under construction. And so, you know, I don't, I don't care about the whole right side of the page. Or maybe we have advertisements right there. And every time that's going to be different, right? So you can do lots of different strategies using this API. You can um, narrow your scope down and only verify like a certain div or other element on the page. So maybe I only want to verify that shopping cart part and not the whole thing. Um, or you can ignore certain regions of the page as well. So if I know that the ad is always shown in this particular part of the page, then I can mask that and say, don't verify this part, right? Um, 
but when I do that, then there's some some give and take there, right? So me narrowing the scope of what I'm verifying, then maybe my picture doesn't have a thousand assertions. Maybe now that's 50 assertions, you know what I mean? Um, so in cases like those, you can couple it with other things that you want to assert on. Um, I often tell people to go down the test automation pyramid so you don't have to do everything at the UI. You can verify a lot of data points and things like that at like maybe the API level and then do one visual assertion that just makes sure everything looks right. Yeah, I think that that makes a lot of sense. And um, one thing that I um, like, I, I think snapshot testing kind of is a, a good um, parallel to this, as you were saying earlier. And one danger that I've seen that people have is they'll make giant snapshots for their stuff and, and those snapshots break a lot. Um, with Apple tools, um, when it breaks, it normally is, uh, you're glad that it broke because it's preventing you from something <laughs> thanks to the, all the smarts that Apple tools has. Um, but another, um, I guess, trade-off that you can have with visual testing is um, there's a, a little bit of indirection between where the assertion lives and where the assertion fails, right? Uh, or at least where um, the um, the specific thing that you're trying to assert. So like some people would um, make the mistake with snapshots to say, hey, that cart uh, number total should increase by quantity of one, whatever the total amount should increase by whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they'll take a snapshot of the whole thing and, and that assertion lives within that snapshot. But when it fails, people don't know whether or not that failure is a bad thing because they're not sure what the intended mm -hmm. assertion is. And mm -hmm. so there's a little less of a, um, you know, specificity there, which is why it, from my, from where I sit, I think it makes a lot of sense that Apple tools is integrated with the existing uh, testing tools that people are using so that mm -hmm. they can have those specific assertions, but then also get all the benefits of the visual testing where most people aren't testing anything that has to do with, with the way that their applications laid out, um, you know, CSS wise or whatever, or, you know, whatever the case may be. Right. And that's a, that's a huge miss when people don't do this. There's so many people who don't. And because of this, I see these like visual bugs all over the place. And a lot of times I'll talk to people and they think, Oh, that's pretty cool. But you know, that is not applicable for their application or mm. that it's a nice to have. But um, as we're developing for more and more, devices and viewports, that's where those visual bugs come in. So yes, your your app looks great on the web, but how does it look on the phone or the tablet or all these different things? And when you have all these different permutations, it's really, really difficult to test for all of those things. And that's where stuff starts breaking. So I see it all the time. Companies, big and small, all of your favorite tech giants <laughs> have these visual bugs all the time. I was looking at um, one not too long ago on Instagram, and this was a sponsored ad, Kent. And uh, all of the text was jumbled up and overlaying on top of each other in the upper left corner and everything else was white space. And oh. I, <laughs> and this was sponsored. Somebody paid for this, right? Um, and so I think about their testing strategy. Anytime I see things like this, you know, as a tester, I start thinking about, well, what was the testing strategy? And it's hard to blame them because I bet they probably had automated tests for them. But your automated test says, is this text present? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Is this one? Is this one? Is this one? And they could have had 10 assertions in that test and all of them been true because this stuff exists in a DOM. And so they missed this and this went out to production where they're losing money as a sponsored ad. They have to refund this customer, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you not only lose money, but also trust. You know, I don't know about you, but I probably would be a little bit hesitant to do another ad on Instagram because I think they don't test their stuff. Mm, yeah, that's a very good point. Um, so Angie, I, I hope you uh, allow me to, to just geek out a little bit on Apple tools for just a second, because there's yeah, one thing that I, I'm not sure how to how to lead you into this. And so I'm going to just mention probably my favorite thing about Apple tools, um, just conceptually. So the um, and, and you can stop me and correct me if I, I miss miss any of this uh, or miss explain this. But um, one of the things that I love about Apple tools is the cross browser support. So let's say that like 
Um, let's say that you just want to use Jest for your testing, and that's all in JS DOM. And so you're first off, you're not actually testing in a real browser, um, which can be problematic, um, and you can't do any cross-browser testing either. Um, but as soon as you throw in Apple Tools assertions in there, this is what you get. So Apple Tools, when, when you say, okay, I want you to snapshot this DOM, um, Apple Tools will say, okay, let me take all of that DOM, uh, HTML, and all that CSS, everything that's in our document right now, and I will upload it to Apple Tools servers. So it's not actually taking a snapshot in your local machine. It uploads it to Apple Tools servers, and then Apple Tools pulls all of that up in all of the different browsers and a bunch of different screen sizes all over the place, and, uh, and then snapshots that. Um, and so here are the two things that makes this so awesome. First off, it makes your tests still run really fast because typically visual testing is really slow. Um, but uh, because we can offload that to Apple Tools, then it's very fast. The second thing that's awesome about this is now you're getting a huge amount of confidence um, that your code or, or that, yeah, what's produced, the DOM output that's produced by your code uh, looks good across different browsers and different screen sizes. And you only had to run that test one time uh, in, in one place. You didn't have to run it over, like on Sauce Labs in like 30 different uh, permutations of, of different browsers and stuff, which takes a lot of time. And so those are two things that I just absolutely love about Apple Tools. Um, it's it's fantastic. Do you, did I miss any of that up, Angie, or do you have any? No, that was great. That was great. So it's called the visual grid. And um, yeah, it does just that, executes it one time. Let's say it runs it on like Chrome, for example. And let's say that your scenario had like 10 steps, right? So after the eighth step, you like maybe do some assertions. This is where you call Apple tools in. Um, everything before that was like setup type of stuff, getting the system in a certain state right and then maybe mm. your last two steps are just like clean up right mm -hmm. so instead of running that across all of the configurations that you support you just run it the one time it executes those eight steps and then when you call apple tools it takes all of the artifacts like you mentioned so the dom uh, css anything that's pertinent to the application it grabs that and then splashes it across all of the configurations that you've specified you like to run against in that state so instead of executing those eight steps across 20 different configurations we don't have to do that let's just take the state of the app and see how it's displayed across all of these different things right so yeah like you said it's lightning fast it saves so much time on test execution um, and so this could then be a part of like your CI jobs where you need all of your tests to be, you know, really fast. Before, a lot of people were doing the visual testing, but they would do it in a separate bill. Maybe that ran once a day or something like that. Mm -hmm. But with this uh, visual grid that now speeds up the test, um, it takes exactly the same amount of time to run like on one config as it would on say like 50 configs because mm -hmm. they're all running in parallel and you're not executing those same steps across all of them. So yeah, it's really amazing. Yeah. It's Magic fantastic. even. <laughs> yeah. I, it's honestly a stroke of genius there. That That's just so awesome. So I do have a question about that though. So when I have that assertion that says, okay, this, this should match. Um, now, I, I have this whole awesome dashboard on Apple Tools that I can go look at and, and compare and approve uh, you know, new snapshots and that. Um, what is it, what's that experience? Can you describe that experience um, in, in the tool? So if I'm using mm -hmm. Jest or Cypress, for example, yeah. um, do, do I see that failure locally or do I have to go to, this, uh, to the dashboard to see that? And um, it, you know, if I see it locally, what, what does that error message look like? How long does that assertion take uh, typically? If I have a, a test that takes like two seconds to run and then I add one Apple Tools assertion in there, is that going to impact the speed of my test? Those kinds of things. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's take a scenario. So you've written the test, you run it. Let's say that this is a regression run and it finds a failure. So the test will fail and it will throw a differences found exception. And it'll give you a link in the error message. So you'll see this on the console 
um, that takes you to the Apple Tools dashboard. So all of the images are stored in the Apple Tools cloud, and then there's this nice little dashboard that keeps all of your test runs and all of your um, visual diffs, right? So you click on the link that takes you to the dashboard. You can then see that test, and it shows you the baseline image, which is the one that you know, you ran the very first time and uh, you're okay with how the app looks. And then it'll show you, um, that'll be on the left side. And then on the right side, it'll show you the new image. And then there, it'll be like some highlights on it that shows you what was different between the images. So um, you can see exactly like what changed. Oh, okay. So they move, the logo is not there or, you know, something like that. So say like your logo is not there or something is... Uh, just kind of jumbled and distorted, um, you would then fail the test in the dashboard. So I really like this because a lot of times people ask me about machine learning and AI and do I think AI is going to take our jobs and stuff like this. So I really like that AI is assisting me right here and saying, hey, human, um, we found some differences, but we're not really smart enough to know if this is bad or not. Can you come, oh, smart human being and look at it? And that just, I don't know, it's an ego boost for me. <laughs> so I go in and um, if, yeah, if, it, if, if it's a failure, then there's this thumbs up, thumbs down. So I'll do a thumbs down, right? And then that'll be marked as a failure. Um, there's also like all of these integrations with things like Jira and stuff like that. So I can like annotate the image and like assign a bug or, you know, assign it to someone or make comments on it. So it's really cool. Um, and, but let's say that it was a change that we intended. So uh, we moved the logo from the left side to the right side of the application. Okay. All right, so this has become a change in my app. I then press the thumbs up to let Apple Tools know, oh, okay, yeah, thank you for letting me know about the change. I would like to update my baseline. When I click the thumbs up, it replaces the new image with um, the old image with the new one. So the baseline is then changed to the new run. So that's how it works. Um, mm. There is a little bit extra time added to um, your test if you're going to put in a visual check. Um, but that decreases by a lot if you use the visual grid, right? Because that mm -hmm. approach is just much faster. But if you're not using the grid, let's say you only want to run against one environment, like, oh, I only care about Chrome or whatever, then it will add a little bit of time to your test. Um, and I've talked to some people because, you know, we like things fast as developers. So I've talked to some people like, do you not care about this time, this extra time? And, you know, they've like, no, because um, it's just checking so many other things, you know. So it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a, a price that people are willing to pay um, mm -hmm. because it gives them that confidence to deploy. Yeah, absolutely. I um I I find it funny. So I, I like to lean more heavily to the integration test side of things. Um, and I find it funny when people say, well, that's going to make your test take a little bit longer. And yeah, okay, it'll take a couple of seconds longer, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm more confident with what I'm shipping. I, I'd be willing to spend a couple extra minutes uh, waiting for my test to finish to be confident I'm shipping. Um, so um, I, I'm actually a little bit curious um, on the process because I've never used Apple Tools on a, in a team setting before. And so I, um, if you could just answer this question really quick, if, if I'm working on a new feature like moving that logo over um, and I'm running all the, like, do you find people typically running these tests locally? And if you do, then I say, okay, I'm going to say update that baseline. But then anybody else who's currently also running these tests on their machine, they don't have my changes yet. And so now they're, are their tests going to start breaking or what's that workflow typically? Yeah. So in the dashboard, the tests um, are identified by a number of criteria. So the name of the test as well as the browser or device. So this works on web or mobile. Um, and the resolution, right? So all of those things coupled together is the identifier for a test. So if I run this test um, locally using like that same dimensions or whatever, um, then that will 
correlate to the test that Applet Tools already has. So if you run in that same thing, then we're talking to the same test, if that makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, so if I update that with the new thing, then you'll have those changes as well because we're sharing like this team space in the mm -hmm. dashboard. Um, what's also great, like that whole logo example, right? So this would be like a maintenance nightmare <laughs> if you think about this, because if you move the logo from the left side to the right side, all of your tests that like took pictures where the logo was, all of these will now fail. Um, mm -hmm. So this is another way that Apple Tools uses AI to find that failure and then look through all of your failures to see if there's like the same failure across multiple tests. Yeah. And then I only can, I can just change it one time. I can say, okay, oh yeah, the logo moves. Great. Can you just fix that in all of my baselines that have mm -hmm. that problem? And it'll go through and do that. So um, that's really cool. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. So um, the the process of getting that change um, applied across my application, um, I know how that works with code because I, I make a pull request, people review the pull request, they merge it. Um, but how do I um, say, okay, now that this has been merged, that new baseline is is correct? What's the the process there? Do you integrate with with GitHub and say, okay, when this pull request is merged, all of its snapshots are the new baseline or how, how does that typically work? work yeah, yeah. Like? so we um, keep like what's called a UI version control. So think of like version control for your code before your baseline images. So we keep a history of uh, all of the baselines for a particular test and we do integrate with GitHub. So um, you can go in and like say, yeah, okay, once this is merged, then this is my new baseline. Um, let's say that you were doing some kind of like A-B testing or something like that and now you want to go with A, so you want to go back to a previous baseline, you can also restore that as well. Wow. Boy, that's powerful stuff. That's I know. Powerful. It's so mature. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, um, I remember trying to set up visual testing a couple of years ago, and it just was nowhere near this. Um, like, <laughs> you'd get a test failure one after the other because some pixels were off. Like, it was just yeah. it was outrageous. Bananas. Um, so... Angie, it has been a pleasure to chat with you. We're, we're coming down on our time. Is there anything else that you wanted to talk about that we didn't get a chance to? Um, no. So I, I, I do have like more information about this on um, my blog as well as other testing strategies and techniques. So I don't just talk about visual testing, but the whole shebang, uh, testing and CI, all of this good stuff. So my blog is angiejones.tech. And um, also director of Test Automation University, which is a platform that we launched this year. Um, and it contains free courses on all things test automation. So um, I do have a course there on visual testing um, in different languages, Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, whatever. So whatever fancies your boat, you can go and check that out. We also have courses on all of the tools and techniques that have to do with test automation so very cool so um f yeah for our homework for everybody um the call to action for this episode angie has this awesome visual testing course on um on apple tools and it's totally free and it's called automated visual testing a fast path to test automation success and it's just about an hour, 18 minutes long, I think, is what you said, Angie. So mm -hmm. um, it, it's a pretty quick one. And it'll, like, if you want to get into this a little bit more, then um, you can go through that and learn a lot more about visual testing. Um, fantastic stuff. It gives you tons of, of confidence. So I definitely recommend that people give that a look. Uh, so, Angie, where's the best place for people to reach you online? Yeah, I'm on Twitter all day long. <laughs> um, so you can hit me up at techgirl1908 or on my website, angiejones.tech, where I blog about test automation strategies and techniques. Great. Awesome. So thank you, Angie, for giving us some of your time today to chat about testing, something near and dear to my heart as well. Um, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day and uh, takes this opportunity to get better at getting confidence with shipping their apps. So thank you so much, Angie. Thanks, Kent.
See ya. All right. Bye-bye.